Welcome back to another tutorial video in this calculator building series. If you missed the introduction and setup video, you can go back and watch that video and follow along, or you can just get the starter code from the description down below. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started on this tutorial. In this video, we're going to be building out this keypad. Um, so if you come into your presentation layer and make a new Kotlin class or file, and this is going to be a file um, because it's just going to be a composable, we're going to call that keypad. And then within that keypad file, we're going to do a, a composable function. And this composable is going to take in as a parameter a um, variable called on button press because we're going to need to pass the action that happens when we press one of these buttons into this composable. And that is going to be of type button action. And it's going to pass back a Kotlin unit. So now within this, within this composable function, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to create a row um, or a, a list that we're going to call a row for each one of these rows on the calculator. So the first one's going to be AC backspace plus or minus or negate and then division. And then the next one will be seven, eight, nine multiplication and so forth. So for each of these buttons, we're going to need for our button data. If you look back in that class, you have two pieces of data that we're going to need. You're going to need your string, which is the text that is actually going to appear on your button. And then you need your function that you want to have that you want to have run when you click on the button. So if we come back to our keypad.kotlin file in here, what we're going to do is we're just going to make a bunch of these variables really quick. So let's see one. So for each one of these, we're going to each button, we're going to have a different action. So just going in order, clear, backspace, negate, division, multiplication, subtraction, addition, decimal, equals. So that is going to be a function for every single button on our keypad except the numbers. I'll show you why in a minute because the numbers we can do in a loop. But for now, we need to actually define each of these. So that on button press parameter that we passed in, we're going to use that. And these are all going to be of type button action. So let me just copy that and paste it down here real quick. And if you don't want to type all of this out, um, you're welcome just to get the code off of GitHub. And you can just copy and paste it from there, or you can just pause the video and type it. So this top one is a button action clear. The next one is a button action backspace, button action negate, button action division, Oh, actually, no. Button action dot operation. And then that operation is going to be of type math operation division. So that's going to be the same for all of these. All of these math operations at least except we don't want to leave them all as division so it'll be division multiplication subtraction and finally addition and then the last two are just going to be a button action decimal 
and a button action equals. So you're welcome to pause the video right here and type all of that out. Or you can just go on over to GitHub and copy and paste that code. I said we were going to do the numbers a little bit differently here. What we're going to do is we're going to make a list, and I'm just going to call it numbers, which is going to be a list of type um, functions that take no parameters and return a unit. And then I'm going to set that equal to an empty list. All we need to do is do a for loop. So for i in 0 dot dot 9 inclusive. So here, we're just going to do numbers equals numbers plus on button press, which is that parameter that we passed in. And then button action dot number and then hand it our i and that should generate the entire list that we need so down here below that all we're going to need to do is create four different rows for each row on our calculator keypad and each one of those is going to be a list so val row and i'm just going to call them row one two three and four row one equals list of and then in this list we are going to have button data and that takes two parameters which is the text and then the on press action And each row except the last row is going to have four buttons in it. So let me copy and paste that four times. That last row, we want to get rid of that last button because that one's only going to have three. And then in row one, the text is going to be simple. You just put in the text that I have displayed on that calculator app that I already built on the side of the screen. So AC for all clear. Um, the that the arrows for backspace and then we're going to do plus slash minus for negation and then the slash for division and then over here we are just going to hand it the variables from from above so clear backspace negate division and then the same thing with the second row. Let's rename that to row two. And we're gonna, the text is simply seven. And then for here, it's actually not gonna be, we don't have a variable named seven, but we have our numbers list and it's gonna be the number at the seventh index is gonna be our seven. Eight, and then same thing here. Let me just copy that so I can paste that after this. So there's my eight, nine, then numbers nine, and then X in quotes, multiplication, and then row three we're going to have four numbers four five numbers five six Then number six, the minus sign, subtraction, and actually I messed up down here. We are going to need one more row. That's not four rows in the calculator. That's five rows in the calculator. So on the fourth row, we're going to have one, two, and three. one, 
two, three, and then let me just put this last one in here. There's our zero while we're at it. And then you have one, two, three, zero. And then the last one on our fourth row is gonna be our addition. And that'll be our addition parameter variable from up above. We'll change that to row four. And then we're gonna go ahead and change that last one to row five, which is gonna have zero and then our decimal. And then finally our equal sign. Okay, so now that we have all of that list, all of those lists set up, we can finally start building out our UI. So for that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a column. And then inside of that column, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a composable function called build row for each row. And that's going to take in a variable, a parameter that's going to be row one, two, three, four, and five. So what we need to do is come down below here and define that build row so that our uh, compose can know how to build each row. We already have all the data that we need. We just need to lay that out. So I'm going to make a new composable function. Fun build row. And this is going to take in a parameter that I'm going to call row. And that's going to be of type list of button data. Now with inside of that row, we'll start with a little spacer. We'll give it a height of maybe two data pixels, not too much, but just enough to know that there is a space in between the two. Go ahead and import all of those. And then after the spacer, we're going to have a row. And we're going to set our horizontal arrangement equal to arrangement dot space evenly. We are going to give it a modifier. And that modifier is going to fill our max width. And then within that row, I'm going to loop through my list, uh, my row list that I passed in. So for each item in row, we're going to go ahead and give it a spacer. And our modifier is going to be a modifier dot width two data pixels. And then after the spacer, we are going to well, let me just come down here really quick. Um, I'll put a spacer on both sides of that. And then in between these two spacers, I'll actually put a spacer at the bottom as well. So in between these two spacers, we're going to have our button, but I'm actually going to do that in another separate function, just because I think it's a little cleaner that way. So I'm going to make it composable again. And this is going to be our calculator, um, our yeah, calculator button. And this is going to take your button data parameter. And it's also going to take a modifier, which we're going to set equal to the default modifier. Um, so we can override that if we want to, but we don't have to. And then after that, we are going to have a color which we're going to set by default to blue. And then our text color is going to be by default white, because that's going to be our color that we have on the blue. OK, so now we need, um, essentially, we need to write the logic here to determine what colors the buttons need to be. 
We could have saved that data within our button data, but I think it's easier just to write a couple if statements here. Um, so we're going to do that, and it's if button text equals AC or if our button text is equal to our backspace sign, then we're going to go ahead and change our color to um, gray. And we're going to change our text color to black. And then uh, if our button dot text dot is digits only, meaning it's only numbers in there, then we are going to set our text. Um, yeah, so if it's digits only, or if it's equal to our decimal, because we're going to color code that like the digits, then we're going to change our color to color dot dark gray. And our text color, we need to set to white, but we've already set that up top, so we don't actually need to change the text color there. Okay, so now after that, all we need to do is actually make our button. So let's give it an on click. And that is just going to be our button dot on press, which is, um, yeah, let's go ahead and import that button. Um, so our on click modifier is going to be our button dot on press, which is that data coming in from our button data class that we defined previously. And then I'm going to give it a shape. And I like just a simple rounded corner shape. Um, not too much, but just enough to make it look like we did something. Um, just make it look not as boxy. So I'm going to give that 15 data pixels. And then give it a modifier, which we're going to set equal to our modifier that we passed into this function. And then our colors, we're going to do um, button defaults dot button colors and then we're going to hand it that color variable from above and then within our button we're just going to have a text field and that text is just going to be equal to our button dot text and our font size I think 34 SP looks about right so I'm going to have it at 34, and then I'm going to do a color um, for the font, and that font is going to be that text color that we determined earlier with all of those if statements. And now, if I come back up here to right in between my spacers, and all I need to do now is do our calculator button, and we're going to pass this our... Um, our item, which is what we're getting from our row. So we're looping through our row. And then for each item in that row, which each of those items is going to be of type button data, which contains our um, the text on the button and then the um, on action um, that was for whenever we click the button, it contains that function as well. So we're going to pass it that button. And then let's go ahead and make a preview. So there's one more thing that we have to do before this is going to work. Uh, but before that, we're just going to have a preview so I can show you what it looks like right now. So preview, show background equals true. Composable. And I'm just going to call it keypad preview. Nothing too special here. Let's see. Give it our calculator theme. And then within that, just call that keypad. And for preview, we don't really need to hand it anything. So I'll just give it an empty function. And now, if we compile our code, so now that my uh, code is done building, 
if we switch over to split view, you can see we do have a keypad here and then we have all the keys that we want, but they're not laid out exactly how we want them. And the reason for that is we didn't give any of these keys, um, any of these buttons a weight, which means they're going to take up just as much room as they need to or they can. Um, so in this case, they're going to take up as much room as the text that is put within the button. So what we need to do is hand a modifier as well to that button. So if you come back up here to our calculator button function, and we also just hand in a modifier, uh, modifier dot weight, and that's just going to be one F. So now we let that reload here. You can see when we hand it that one F weight, it go, it stretches them all out to the length that we want. So it fills up the whole screen. So this is exactly what we want, and that's exactly how you build your keypad. I will go ahead and put all the code from this video up on GitHub, and you can access that down in the link below. And we will see you in the next video, and we'll go ahead and build out this display screen for the numbers, as well as our history display screen above that.